Good morning, ladies and uh, gentlemen, and welcome to the new trading week. Welcome to your daily news update from the Frankfurt office of CMC Markets. When you look at Wall Street, there was the best trading week for equities last week since the year 2014. When you look at U.S. Treasuries, it was the worst week since the year 2013. 1.2 trillion U.S. dollars were lost on the Treasury market. And one reason for that is um, uh, what Goldman Sachs explains. They expect that inflation will go up as a result of debt financed infrastructure investments that Donald Trump, the Trump government, wants to um, initiate. So inflation will go up and Goldman Sachs uh, actually recommends going long in gold. And gold had a worse or really, really a bad week at least. Um, there it will be interesting and important to see that it holds the support at 1,199 US dollars. So just shy of the mark, 1,200 should not go lower than that. Should it do that, then it would be um, a more bearish uh, chart. Because if you look at the chart of gold, it has bottomed out in, uh, in uh, just one year ago, and so in winter and early weeks of the new year, it has formed a bottom, a rounded bottom. And off of that, it has built or has made a series of higher highs and higher lows. Should it go below 1199 dollars, $1, should it go lower than that, it would interrupt that series of higher highs and higher lows. So it wouldn't be a clear and healthy chart anymore. So watch for that support. Last week there was one big trend that was emerging markets equities. They had huge outflows. So after Brexit we know that um, global funds went out of euro stocks. So the euro stocks and, um, and the DAX for example, they pulled out money from there and they went into emerging markets because they said okay China stocks in Hong Kong have the least to do with Brexit, so they are interesting. And they are also interesting because the Federal Reserve, as a result of the uncertainty coming out of Brexit, will keep rates lower for longer. So that would be positive for emerging markets. So if you look at the Hang Seng, uh, it bounced off meaningfully because investment funds invested their money, they got out of Euro stocks, invested them in emerging markets and they invested them in the United States. Now we see that as a result of Trump and its protectionist um, measures he wants to implement, uh, do investment funds again pull money out of emerging markets. And there was no single central bank actually last week with uh, the US elections who was not looking closely or even intervening in their FX markets because they saw that actually there were a lot of funds pulling out money out of their, out of their country which weakened their uh, currencies and so there were a lot of FX interventions to stabilize the Yuan, to stabilize the South Korean won because they weakened meaningfully as a result of that capital transfer back into the US dollar until there will be um, some more certainty regarding the, the uh, foreign policy of Donald Trump and trade policy he wants to do. I think that emerging markets, uh, treasuries and emerging markets, FX as well as equities from there will be under pressure. Last week the big winners uh, when it comes to looking at the uh, several sectors were healthcare. Those were the, the like punchbacks uh, in the um, in the election campaign rhetoric between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump, both said they want to totally change uh, Obamacare. Um, Clinton wanted to change it in parts. Donald Trump wanted to like completely uh, make a new Obamacare, like a Trump care. I don't know what the name of that will be. Now he said that he wants to keep parts of Obamacare and wants to just um, do some or redo some, some, some big parts of it. I don't know the details yet, but healthcare stocks were the punch back. Um, they suffered like losses of 20, 30, 40 percent. I had that in that news update video just uh, one and a half weeks ago. Talked about that and so they rebounded. Healthcare, one of the big winners in the last week. 
um, again here industrials also up meaningfully. They expect that there will be uh, big contracts coming from the government soon. And as um, then also was the word I was looking for, also the tech sector and banks were the big winners. Emerging markets, equities and treasuries, I just said that, were on the losing side. And also utilities and consumption were going down. That because they are defensive sectors and everybody went up the risk curve last week and went into the full blown risk on mode and went into some more interesting sectors and sold the defensive consumer discretionary, uh, discretionary and consumer staple stocks. Yeah, and that is actually it for, for the moment. Just one, some, some last words to the uh, WTI and Brent prices. They went down meaningfully last week because there are two trends actually happening. One is that the OPEC hasn't shown the discipline that it wants to or that it needs at the end of this month. When they will meet in Vienna, they want to cut their daily production quotas by as much as 1.1 million barrels a day. But they need to have the discipline to have every member, any or every member country to really follow that production cut. Now we know that just in the past month, Iraq and I know it was Iraq and two other countries actually produced over their quota. So they produce more than they are allowed to. So it would be interesting to see if the OPEC really can, can have the discipline to um, make, yeah, to, to, to really make that cut. Um, if not, and the markets for now are really doubting that it can. If not, then everybody will just produce as much as they want. One factor that came into uh, the bearishness with WTI lately was, of course, the election of Donald Trump. He wants to um, have no environment protection anymore. He wants to have a full-blown fracking production, full-blown offshore production of oil and gas. And he wants to also bring coal back into the game. So that, one should assume, could also lead to more oil production in the United States. So that is bringing the swing producer of the world, which is the United States, back in the game. Not for now, not for next week, but next month there could be an increased US production because of the new Trump government actually subsidizing or whatever this sector that has suffered so much from this uh, dwindling oil prices.